Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Hi, my name is Tim Copra, and I'm the commander of Expedition 47 here on the International Space Station. And today I'd like to read you a book that's written by a very good friend of mine named Daniel Levis. And the book is called Endeavor's Long Journey. See uh, Danny sign the inside. He flew on STS-117, and uh, I came home with him on STS-128. So Endeavor's Long Journey. We're going to the Science Center, I scream with excitement. We have been there before, but my sister, Bella, was very little then. I remember pretending to be a pilot in the cool planes they have out front. Today is going to be extra special, Mom tells us. Do you remember watching television, seeing the space shuttle Endeavour flying across the country on the back of another aircraft? She and the other shuttles were a very important part of human space exploration. She has journeyed a long, long way. As we arrive, hundreds of people walk toward the museum. We wonder what Endeavour will look like up close. Mom, why do you keep calling Endeavour a she? I ask. Well, Jojo, it's simple. Just like I take care of you and your sister, Endeavour took care of all the astronauts who flew her. The astronauts think of Endeavour kind of like their mother. They really do. And the astronauts treat her with great care and also respect as they depend on her. As we walk under Endeavour's wings, we can see the many heat shield tiles that protect her from the high temperature generated when re-entering Earth's atmosphere from space. She is magnificent. Everyone is ooing and aahing. I dream about how this enormous shuttle has carried astronauts, and I wonder what it would have been like to be part of the crew, to eat, sleep, and work inside. Suddenly, I feel myself floating. Then, a soft voice whispers, Thanks for your visit, Jojo. What is that? I ask myself. It's me, Endeavor. Her voice is kind and gentle, but firm, like Mom's. Come join me on the journey I have traveled. I look at my clothes, now a blue flight suit, the kind astronauts wear. Then the world begins to fade. All that is left is Endeavor and me. It is pitch black with millions of stars, and Earth is far below. But I'm not afraid. Floating in space is fun. Now I know what it feels like to be in microgravity. Next, I find myself inside Endeavour on the flight deck. I look at the instrument panel, which shows we are traveling at 17,500 miles an hour. That's how fast we need to travel to stay in orbit, she says. Wow, I am amazed. But getting into space is just the start. This was my first mission, Endeavour explains. I watched the astronauts on the mid-deck, frantically preparing for an urgent situation. A satellite that has been launched into space is not working properly. The astronauts need to perform a spacewalk to grab the satellite and bring it back to Earth. It was a dangerous mission. This was the very first and only time that there were three spacewalkers that had left the ship at the same time. They actually captured the satellite with their hands. The airlock in the mid-deck allowed the astronauts to leave their comfy crew compartment for the potential danger outside, she adds. And they used a very special spacesuit to do this. In space, the temperature can reach 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the sun and minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade. The suits also help the astronauts to breathe. There is no air in space. So if anything happens to the suits, the astronauts are in big trouble. As one spacewalker struggles with the satellite, another astronaut seems to be in trouble. He twitches his face and scrunches his nose, and he moans. What's wrong, ground control asks anxiously. The astronaut moans again, and everyone waits for his answer. My nose is itchy, and I can't scratch it through the helmet. We all breathe a sigh of relief. Then the voice crackles over the radio again. Houston, we have the satellite. Ground control announces 
The mission is a success. Were you built just to rescue satellites? I ask Endeavor. Oh, much more than that, she says. I was built to replace shuttle Challenger, who had an accident. We learned in school that one of the space shuttles actually blew up after it launched, I say. Was that Challenger? Yes, says Endeavor. After a small seal broke on one of the rockets during her launch, she never made it back home. The break caused the rocket to explode. Seven brave astronauts died on that mission. One of them was the very first teacher to go into space, Krista McAuliffe. She taught high school before she was trained to become an astronaut. It never explains in a brave voice. The men and women who built Challenger were determined to, to not give up. With everyone's support behind them, they built me. I soared into space on my first mission in 1992. It must have been sad for everyone after what happened to your sister, but I'm glad that you were, you were built. I smile. Watching the satellite rescue was awesome. As I float through the mid-deck, I see scientists busy working on various experiments. I'd like you to meet my special team, Endeavor says. This young lady is Dr. Mae Jamison. I brought her into space, making her the first female African-American astronaut. These young men are Dr. Dr. Uh, Marumu Mori, the first Japanese astronaut in the space shuttle, and John Harrington, the first Native American astronaut to walk in space. I didn't know astronauts were doctors, I exclaim. Astronauts come from all walks of life. During my journeys, I brought doctors, engineers, pilots, astronomers, geologists, and many other types of astronauts into space, she explains. So there are different kinds of astronauts, I say. Yes, Jojo, astronauts with different types of training and backgrounds work together as a team to complete many different types of projects. This is getting more interesting. Tell me about your other missions, I say. In 1993, one of the most daring missions was to perform the very first eye operation in space, Endeavour says. Really? Who did you operate on? It was an operation on the Hubble Space Telescope, she tells me. It was a one-of-a-kind surgery to help Hubble see images deep into space, millions of miles away. What was wrong with the telescope, I ask. Look outside my windows and you'll see for yourself, Endeavour says. I watch as the astronauts catch the big telescope with a 50-foot robot arm and pull it into the, the shuttle's open payload bay. A few years earlier, the telescope was successfully launched into orbit, but its view became fuzzy because one of the mirrors was out of shape. So I brought a crew of astronauts to perform the very difficult task of fixing the fuzziness by putting glasses on Hubble and adding some new instruments, Endeavour explains. The astronauts move so gently around the telescope in their bulky spacesuits. The crew inside are focused on their jobs, as are the spacewalkers. I can hear the concerned voices of the controllers back on Earth. The whole team works to fix the fragile telescope. Everything has to be done perfectly. At last, the words the crew are waiting for come from mission control. Great news, Endeavour. Your mission is complete. Hubble can see. All the astronauts aboard Endeavour smile and hug each other in congratulations. The Hubble can now take the best pictures of the stars and the galaxies ever taken. And the pictures are amazing. What kind of other missions were you on? I asked excitedly. My final missions aim to build the International Space Station, also called the ISS, Endeavour tells me. I took the first crew to ever board the ISS which at the time was a tiny space station, not much bigger than your school bus. Over 13 years, my sister shuttles and I took many trips there, slowly building it to the size it is today. The ISS now has people living in space permanently, and it is bigger than a football field with more room inside than a large jet airplane. Wow, you sure have done a lot in space. I float through the, the flight deck of Endeavour. On June 1st, 2011, I completed my last mission, journeying to the ISS one final time with an experiment to help scientists understand the beginnings of our universe, she continues. You see, Jojo, 
my very long journey was not one I took alone. Together with astronauts, scientists, engineers, and technicians, we explored space as a team of humans and the, and the machines they made. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if you know one of them. Endeavor smiles mischievously. I float to the back window. Looking off into the sky, deep in space, I see something that looks like two small clouds. Clouds? But how can there be clouds in space, I ask? Space has no atmosphere. You're right, there are no clouds in space, she whispers back. Look deeper, Jojo. What do you see? I look again and strain my eyes. Deeper and deeper I look. Those are not clouds. They are filled with stars. That's right, what you see are galaxies, groups of millions of stars, she explains. They are called melogenic clouds and two neighboring galaxies that are visible from Earth. Millions and millions of stars, all clustered together, make what looks like two hazy clouds. Here I am inside Endeavor, in my own Milky Way galaxy, looking at stars far, far away. My mind begins to wander. Does that galaxy have a planet like Earth? Is there life there? I wonder if someone is there now, looking back at me, asking the same question. This is what's so special about space. For 19 years I flew, looking at sites like this, she says with pride. After so many years of exploring, there are still many questions left unanswered. As Endeavor tells me about the many questions she still has about the universe, I begin to float away from her. We drift further and further apart as I begin to fall back to Earth. Then I hear a very familiar voice. Jojo, Endeavor whispers, I've been on a long journey, and I'm happy I've been able to share my wonderful experience with you. I'm ready for a well-deserved rest. Go tell your friends to come visit me. I'll be here ready to take them on my incredible journey. I'm sad. I don't want the, the adventure to end. I want to fly with Endeavor and continue the exploration of space. Remember, I was built by people who believe that humans should explore space. Now. It's your turn to dream and build the next ship to carry you and the next generation of astronauts to the great beyond. Dream your dreams and make them happen. Explore all the secrets the universe has to share. Her voice becomes fainter and then fades away. Suddenly, I find myself once again with Mom and Bella. Mom, I shout, tell me more about Endeavor. Tell me about the Hubble Space Telescope and the ISS. Tell me about the other secrets of space. Oh, my Jojo, Mom smiles. I'm glad you're enjoying this as much as I am. Your grandfather is going to be so happy. You see, he was one of the people who worked on Endeavor back when she was first built. He's going to be so excited to hear how much you enjoyed seeing something he had a part in building. Wow. I was, it was exciting to know that my grandfather was one of the people Endeavor had told me about. He must have been one of those dedicated workers who knew the importance of space exploration. He and the others helped Endeavor accomplish those missions, just like the astronauts. We spend the next few hours walking through the rest of the museum. Although we see many things, I'll never forget the incredible journey Endeavor shared with me. The end. And then in the back are some Endeavor fun facts about the Endeavor Space Shuttle, which I flew on in 2009 as part of STS-127. So this has been Endeavor's long journey. I'm Tim Copra, commander of Expedition 47 on the International Space Station, and I hope you enjoyed the book.